Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan and I'm joined by Dan Bell, Director of Sales at HiFX for our monthly Never a Dull Moment Currencies Report. Welcome in again, Dan. Thanks, Gareth. Good to be here. Um, now, look, we'll kick off with the, the big kahuna, the US Federal Reserve. Um, we are now really expecting them to start, well, to hike interest rates uh, next month in December for the first time in, in more than nine years. Is it now a lay down Mazir that they will? Look, um, I, I think so. You know, I think um, that the, the, the latest sort of consensus about the Fed raising interest rates in December is, is about 70%. Um, and that's following a very, very strong employment number out of the US last Friday night, uh, which showed that the US economy generated over 270,000 jobs um, in November, and the unemployment rate um, dropped to the lowest level since 2008 to around 5%. Plus, we also saw an increase in, um, in average hourly earnings. So across the board, a very, very strong employment number uh, from the US and, and pretty much um, seeing a, an immediate response from the market, pricing and an interest rate hike from the Fed in December. The currency market reacted um, immediately with a, about a 1.5% drop in the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar, and, and that was seen across the board against the US. So clearly for the Fed, the, the US economic strength is, is there from based on these these job numbers. One of the other factors in their decision uh, last time around not to hike was um, global uncertainty and yep. there was quite a bit of turmoil in the Chinese share markets. They've calmed down as well. Yep. So are there any excuses left for the Fed? <laughs> Look, there's always an excuse not to, to, to raise interest rates and uh, yeah, there's certainly uh, investors out there who, who I'm sure would be uh, would be quite happy for the Fed not to raise interest rates uh, and continue su supplying cheap money to the to, to the world. But um, you know, the US have, have have had interest rates down at zero percent, um, zero to 0.25 percent for a very long time now. Uh, they've obviously undertaken this, the quantitative easing programs over the last few years. We're at a point where I think the Fed needs to raise interest rates um, to give them a bit of room to manoeuvre if in fact we do see a slowdown in their economy next year or the year after. And uh, at the end of the day they don't have any room to manoeuvre. When your rates are at zero, that's it, you need to go out there and start printing money again. So um, look, I think the, uh, the door is open now and the Fed need to, uh, need to respond accordingly. Now, commodity prices have been volatile again too. Um, what do we need to be watching for there? Yeah, it's just an ongoing weakness in commodity prices and you know we, we, we see obviously quite a bit of volatility in the oil price on a daily basis. I mean oil prices were down about 3% 3, uh, 3 again overnight, sitting around $43 a barrel. That has a, b a big impact on, uh, on inflation and um, we're continuing to see the sort of deflation risk around the world, um, you know, we're seeing producer price, the producer price index uh, as a measure of inflation in, in, uh, in, in China, for example, down, uh, down over 5%. Um, and, and every major economy, you're not seeing any, any, any meaning, meaningful inflation. So you've got all these central banks around the world who have these very, very low interest rates. Um, you've got, um, obviously, forms of quantitative easing which are going on in Japan, Europe, you've got um, the US which, okay, we're going to see an interest rate hike from the US but it's only going to take their rate to uh, to 0.25%. So, so look, th th there's still not a lot the world can do around this inflation uh, or deflation issue and uh, and I think that's going to continue to, to, to be a big story and a big driver of financial markets going forward and, and of the currency. Um, I mean we've seen a little bit of a stabilisation in the New Zealand dollar uh, consolidating around 65, 65.50 against the US dollar over 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 the last uh, the last few days, um, probably reflecting the fact that hey, you know, whilst um, interest rates are low in New Zealand, on a historical basis, we're still paying you know, our cash rate at 2.75 percent is still one of the highest in the world. Now, um, back here in New Zealand, obviously we we did have uh, the Reserve Bank's financial stability report yesterday. The usual concerns about housing and, and dairy were raised, um, I guess with a slightly different emphasis and focus, maybe more on housing than dairy as six months ago, maybe it was more dairy than housing. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, the next OCR review monetary policy statement from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand coming out on December 10th. Now that's about a week before we hear from the Fed. Um, what do you think um, Reserve Bank Governor Graham Wheeler is going to do then? Yeah, look, I think a couple of weeks ago we were pretty, you know, the market I think was, was definitely leaning towards another uh, rate cut from the RBNZ. Um, the most recent comments from the Governor haven't really been uh, that conclusive around that outcome. Um, and, and yes, obviously 
talking about the financial stability uh, issues in our economy, housing obviously um, continuing to be an issue. But we have to remember that controlling house prices isn't actually the, re the Reserve Bank's mandate. Um, so house prices have an impact on, um, on, on financial stability and that, and that is a mandate of the, uh, of the RBNZ but it's not their job to, to, to necessarily control house prices. It's obviously um, has a big impact on everything but um, you know, the reality is they'll also be looking uh, offshore at the way commodity prices continue to weaken. Um, you know, the most recent sort of uh, price action there would suggest that we're not going to see a meaningful recovery in, in dairy prices over the next uh, over the next few months. We've got uh, a growing risk of, of, of drought uh, and El Nino in this country. Um, certain measures of of, um, of of, uh, of, of confidence in the economy aren't really that that great. You know, there's there's bits and pieces of of, of, of uh, negativity coming into the New Zealand economy, which I think the the governor is going to be concerned about. So, I still think December is probably about a 50-50 call in terms of the RBNZ um, cash rate at 2.75%. I think there's still an easing bias. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what he does then. Obviously, uh, he won't know what the Fed does for a, for a few more days after that. Um, and if he doesn't raise interest rates, well, I see. I, I think we will see quite a quite a decent uplift in the New Zealand dollar, which isn't what he wants. That's going to be interesting to watch. Now, with that New Zealand dollar, um, what can we expect over the next few months? And you know, if, if I'm an exporter or an importer, what should I be thinking about? Yeah, so we're trading around 65 and a half against the US dollar. Um, so we've had a pretty quiet range over the last few days. Going back last month, we had a, a pretty big recovery in the New Zealand dollar from those lows around 62.50, which occurred around the time we, we, we thought the Chinese stock market was looking like a, it was going to collapse. Uh, so the New Zealand dollar went from 62.50 all the way up to almost 69 cents uh, in a very short period of time. Now that rally has has obviously run out of of, of puff, and I think um, it, it current levels we th we think the New Zealand dollar is. Is, is in the middle of the range. Um, for us, we still think there's more downside risk uh, as we move into the Fed tightening cycle and as commodity prices remain under pressure. So going into next year, uh, we still think the New Zealand dollar's got more downside. Um, look, it doesn't look like it's going to collapse now because things have calmed down globally, but um, we do think that it's got um, more, more, more weakness ahead. So anything for an importer over, um, you know, over 65, 66, is, is looking reasonably good at the moment, um, and, and, and exporters obviously in the in terms of where we are relative to where we were last year. I mean, current levels are still pretty good. So um, yeah, so so I think we've got a downside bias with with um, a, a sell on the rallies for importers. And I guess is there still that downside bias there too against the Australian dollar? Against the Aussie, it's tricky, isn't it? Because you know they've got um, they've got their own issues with um, their economy, and obviously. Uh, iron ore prices, which have you know pretty much halved um, over the last 12 months or so, um, and their cash rate down at 2%. There's signs that their housing market has has slowed as well. Um, and look, you know they're they're still struggling, I guess, to to see that uh, to see um, other parts of the economy outside of uh, the commodities and resources sector pick up the slack. So um, the Kiwi Aussie cross rate for us is more of a range trade between sort of 91 and 96, and, and I think today it's trading around sort of 93. Um, against the other European crosses, I, I think you know the Kiwi dollar is sort of sitting around 61 against the euro, and it's sort of holding up there. Um, interesting to note, actually, um, unemployment um, uh, out of uh, out of the UK last night much much better than expected. So I think um, there's a decent chance that we will see the Bank of England raise interest rates next year, which should continue to provide support to the pound. Um, and, and I think the Fed and the Bank of England, I, I, I think they're going to be more closely aligned. I think once the Fed raises, I think it's going to open the door for the Bank of England as long as their economy continues along its, um, its, its, its current path. So I think we'll continue to see more strength in the pound versus, uh, versus the New Zealand dollar. Um, and against the Japanese yen, we're reasonably stable, but probably more of a downside bias there as well, given the, um, the, the outlook for commodity prices. Great. Well, thanks a lot for that, Dan. That's Dan thanks. Bell from HiFX, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz with our Never a Dull Moment monthly currencies report.